In thinking about what lifelong learning is really about, I want first to draw attention to the relationship between lifelong learning and the idea of meritocracy. Meritocracy is a term that was originally coined by Michael Young, who was later Lord Young, and he wrote a book in 1948 called The Rise of the Meritocracy. In The Rise of the Meritocracy, a picture of the future is painted where the best intentions of people and politicians to create an equitable and fair society go wrong because despite our intentions to measure everyone's merit based on tests and competencies and IQ tests and all sorts of things like that, vested interests within education particularly conspire to create greater inequalities in society. Unfortunately, politicians, including Tony Blair and many politicians across Europe, have not seen meritocracy as the satire that Michael Young intended. They have instead taken the blessed thing seriously. The current fashion for measuring competencies and creating vast lists of competencies is very much related to this agenda of meritocracy as understood by our current flock of politicians and very much to the dismay of Michael Young who invented the term. In this presentation I want to re-examine the idea of competency, particularly in the light of the extraordinary growth in big data and the corresponding sophistication of data analytic algorithms. However much we might think we understand competency, it actually raises huge questions for us in terms of how we make judgments about each other and how we determine whether one person is skilled and another person isn't. Imagine you are watching somebody doing something really complicated. At what point when you're watching them do you think, ah, this person can do this thing really well? What have you seen to cause you to reach that judgment? How many times has the person performed the skill for you to realise that they can actually do it? What is the structure of the events that caused you to reach your conclusion? These are very difficult and deep questions, but they are questions which fundamentally lie at the heart of our understanding about competency. We've got used to thinking about competency as a kind of label that we attach to something that somebody can do. Where do those labels come from? Well, the experts tell us that we need taxonomies listing every single possible competency that might arise in an economy. So when you're looking at somebody performing a complicated skill, at what point do you decide that the skill that they're performing matches one of the labels that's been defined in a list of competencies. And how do you do that? How do you search through the list of all the available competencies to decide which particular competency is the one that's being displayed by the person you're watching? This all starts to get a bit silly. Of course, when we watch somebody doing something complicated, we form some sort of judgment. It may be that our judgment matches a label within a list of competencies, but equally it may not, and neither may we care whether our judgment matches a label in a list of competencies. This has been the fundamental problem that has been addressed by the Trailer Project. The Trailer Project has provided a set of tools whereby individuals can find resources that indicate their skill in some area and they attach to that resource a description of the competency 
which they claim through identifying that resource. During the project, we've conducted training sessions to encourage people to use the tools. Perhaps not surprisingly, most of the usage of the tools has occurred during these training sessions. Thanks to the training sessions, we have collected a significant amount of data where users have selected resources and then they have selected competencies to match those resources. However, this data is interesting not necessarily for reasons that legitimize the trailer approach, but because it gives an insight into the way that people use systems like trailer and make decisions as to what information they should reveal about themselves. The major feature in the data that we've collected from trailer is the fact that most users within these training sessions revealed very little information about themselves. On the one hand, they did tell us about the kind of things they were interested in. But on the other hand, the information that they gave us about the competencies that they claimed was simply a repetition of the subjects of the resources which they'd selected to describe. Under those circumstances, it is worth asking the question, what is the point of attaching a competency description to the resource if the competency description is simply a repetition of the resource? A technical answer to that question would be that it is easier to process data about competency if particular codes of competencies are attached to resources. However, in this current work that's reported in this paper, I'm going to argue that we don't need to do this and that data analytic technology has become sufficiently mature to avoid the need for enormous taxonomies of competencies. Moreover, with sophisticated analytic techniques, we can identify more than just the skills that people have or the interests that people have. We can also start to analyze the way in which they interact with systems and the willingness they have to reveal information about themselves. Deeper analysis can indicate the extent of a person's self-confidence or their self-efficacy. And as we start to look at how much information individuals are willing to reveal about themselves, we can start to make judgments about the real level of competency in particular domains of knowledge of individuals. In order to understand how we go about this analysis, I want to come back to the first question that I asked at the beginning of this presentation. When we watch somebody doing something complicated, there is a flow of information, there is a flow of experience, and somewhere during that flow we reach a judgment, yes, this person can do such and such, whatever it is. In the flow of information, or the flow of experience, there is lots and lots of information that is effectively redundant. That means that the information is spurious to the actual judgment that we make that this is the competency that we think is on display. It is in analysing the redundancies associated with resources and with competency statements that we think real progress can be made in the analysis of what people can do. In Trailer, the first thing that a user is asked to do is to identify a resource that indicates a competency that they think they have. In the resources that they choose, typically their videos or websites, there are very large amounts of redundancy. There is a large amount of repetition 
in text. There is a large amount of repeated actions in videos. People use the same words and keep on saying and emphasizing the things that they think they're doing within the resources. A bit like I am talking to you in this video. So the first challenge is to think of a way in which we can analyze the redundancies associated with these resources. One of the simplest things to do is to look at all the associated text with a resource. So for example, we can look at a video and look at all the comments and the description associated with that video. We can then take that body of text that's uh, gathered from the resource and treat it as an entire corpus of text related to the resource. Corpuses of text can be analysed for repeated terms, repeated words, uh, the terms that are important in terms of the thematic content of the corpus. Within text mining tools like R, which I'm using here, there are ways in which we can produce a matrix of the terms and the frequencies of those terms within a particular document. We can then start to explore, first of all, how much redundancy is in the matrix, and we can also identify what we think might be the key topics within that matrix that can summarize what a particular document is about. But in trailer we ask people to do something quite interesting because we ask them to choose a resource and the resource has redundancies and we can create a matrix and a corpus out of the redundancies in the resource but we also ask them to select a competency which relates to that resource. Now what we're really asking them to do is to say, look at this resource, look at all this redundancy. This is what I think all of this redundancy is about. The competency statement that people make is a statement of the aboutness of a resource. And so we're back to the first question. How do people make that judgment? Well, if we can measure the redundancy in the resource, is there also a way in which we can measure the redundancies that lie behind a competency statement? Of course there is. That's precisely what the internet is for. That's what a search engine does. We stick in a term into a search engine and it brings back huge amounts of redundancy related to that term. So what we can do with a competency statement, just as we can do with a resource, is we can generate redundancies relating to a competency statement. And having generated the redundancies relating to a statement, we can create a corpus and we can create a document term matrix. And if we've got a document term matrix for the resource and we've got a document term matrix for the redundancies that sit behind the competency statement, we can compare these two matrices. Now, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to work out that if somebody has said that the competency they claim for a resource is absolutely identical to the title of that resource, the matching between the redundancies of the resource and the redundancies that sit behind the competency statement will be pretty immediate. The redundancies of the resource will be almost identical to the redundancies that sit behind the competency statement and so there'll be an immediate matching. This immediate matching, this very shallow matching, is an indication of the fact that very little information has been added by the user in their labelling of a competency to the resource. But let's just say, for argument's sake, that somebody was more imaginative, that in some way they'd chosen a, a rather abstract resource, maybe an excerpt from a movie, and they'd chosen 
a somewhat obscure competency which didn't necessarily at first glance relate to the movie. Now, to any observer looking at that, they might think it was nonsense or they might think there was something deeper going on there. And the question is whether analytically we can say, well, there is something deeper going on there and there is this information that is revealed when we look closer. The analytical question in that case is whether we can identify the depth at which the matching actually takes place. To do this, we go through a recursive process of generating redundancies, comparing document term matrices, identifying automatically the topics that emerge from those redundancies and going through the process again. And the further we continue to do this, the closer the matches are between the document term matrices because the topics between the competencies and between the resources, the topics start to converge. The fundamental issue is that the deeper you have to go to get a close match between the two document term matrices, the deeper that is, the more information a, a user chooses to reveal about themselves in the statement they make and the, the resource that they choose. This depth of matching can be seen to relate to, I think, two really important aspects of, of human uh, character. Firstly, I think we're looking at the degree of confidence that a person has in making bold statements about themselves, which they can then um, talk about and articulate, well, what is the connection between this obscure movie and this statement that I'm making about myself? And of course, what are they doing when they're talking about the connections between their statements and the resources? What they're doing is they're generating redundancy. That's what we look for when we're looking for anybody displaying a competency. We're not looking for a box that's ticked to say they've got a competency. We're looking for their capacity to generate redundancies which we will then judge as they are competent in such and such. And of course it's not just about competency or confidence, it's also about creativity. It's also, it's just simply the spark that some people have that you see and you see them performing and doing certain things and you think, yes, I want to employ them. They're, they're the peop that's the kind of person that I want in my organization. So here, almost inadvertently, we have an analytical technique that might give us a grasp on some of the deeper, softer skills that people have. Those levels of confidence, the sort of self-efficacy, the creativity of people we have a way in which we might be able to measure those kind of qualities which are fundamentally um, so important in terms of the employability of individuals. But given that we have analytical tools that can dig into a corpus of information in this way, why do we ask people to use systems like Trailer? Why don't we simply ask them to keep a corpus of all the things that they ever write and then provide them with their own tools that can do the analysis and emerge the competencies that come from that data. So Trailer has led us to think about a kind of personal corpus system whereby people can emerge their own competencies. And that's an interesting proposition when we come to think about meritocracy. If people have personal tools which can identify their emergent, creative, imaginative talents, then we can have an education system which specifically targets those talents, targets the creativity and imagination of people, and gives them confidence. 